the final selection and latest Mr. Relevant 2019 with the 254th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft is picked by the Arizona Cardinals. They select Caleb Wilson, a tight end from UCLA. Oh, just up the road. He can take a bike. Go, he can take a bike. All right, Mr. Irrelevant, congratulations, Maurice Jones-Drew. Your alma mater got somebody well, it, picked in the 2019 NFL Draft. It's, yeah. it's, it's not only that. Finally, it's, finally. It's, oh, it's not only that, guys. Lance, tell them what happened. You we're sitting it. here, and we're sitting here saying literally just, all right, who's going to be Mr. Irrelevant? And I'm trying to go through my head of guys that could make some sense for them. And MJD just says, it's Caleb Wilson. Yeah, guess what? That's not a clean score. It because is. It's, you, no, it's not. It's UCLA. It, it of course every, you said Caleb no, Wilson. No, no, no. Of course it you fits said what they're Wilson. trying to do, though. What are they trying to do? They need a tight end they that's do. fast. Reggie Seals Jones, the only guy that, there. Remember, he ran four, five, six. He can run and, and be that versatile weapon, a bigger slot. Hey, I'm going to put it to you, Bucky. Is that a clean score? I mean, I don't no, think not at all. Oh, Bucky dude, Brooks, he was a longtime scout, did it for the Seahawks long time and the hater. Carolina Panthers. Two teams long time that went hater. to the Super Bowl <laughs> on his watch. Maurice Jones drew in the Hall of Fame at UCLA, soon to be inducted into the Jaguars. Hall of oh, Fame. Do they have easy. one? I don't yes, know. We got a Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor? Ring okay, of yeah. Honor. Or he's going to make the Ring of Honor. No we, question. You never know. Jaguars. It may, it may, Absolutely. It may, it may not. You just got to make a couple trips to London with them. It's in the know? swimming, it's in Listen, the swimming I'm, pool. I'm in with Jackie Robinson, so I'm okay there right now. There you go. You're all right. UCLA. <laughs> and of course, the man that pens all of our draft bios, the backbone of the NFL draft here at NFL Network and NFL.com. Lance <laughs> Zerline. Gentlemen, let's get it started straight out the gate. The biggest question which team had the best draft? Bucky. Oh, it's easy. The New England Patriots had easy? the best. Oh, easy. I mean, they win everything. Oh. So they won the draft. They win the Super Bowl. They win the draft. Wow. They did it. When you look there, I want you to think, because I know you're a big-time investor. I am. It's the Warren Buffett principle. Okay. Brand names. Mm. Invest in brand names. Invest in the things that you see. Blue chips. Mm. We look at all those guys. All big schools. We don't have any small schools represented. Nikhil Harry, Juwan Williams, Chase Winovich, Damian Harris, all played at big-time programs. Then you even go down. Jared Stidham, they picked up from Auburn, played in the SEC. Bill Belichick has it figured out. Legitimate heir apparent to Tom Brady. Jared Stidham, yes or no? Well, I think he can be. I think he has an opportunity to be that guy. Look, when we watch how guys have developed in that system, we saw Jimmy Garoppolo, Jacoby Brissett. Jared Stidham will be the next one to have an opportunity to back up Tom Brady, then eventually ascend to being able to be a starter either in New England or elsewhere. All right, Maurice, best draft. Well, to me, it's the Minnesota Vikings. And I, and I say this because Gary Kubiak becomes their kind of assistant head coach of offense. And then he goes out and picks up Brand new offensive line, tight end and running back to help out Kirk Cousins. That's what you're looking for. So as I go down, you get a center, Bradbury, to kind of come in, be your center, guy that reaches to a lot of that NC State. You go tight end, Irv Smith out of Alabama, a versatile weapon to go across the middle, kind of help with Rudolph. Then you have Alexander Madison, downhill. And I talked with them last night about why they picked Madison. Downhill physical runner. We have the, the guy that can break the long one. We need a guy that's going to be a bruiser. And then, you know, my kind of guy. Who's my kind of guy? Drew Samia. A little nasty. Now, I don't know about, you know, the, the other You're school. fine with Cam Smith. The Cam Smith, school, the they, captain. Uh, yeah. The captain you know, of the USC, got, two years. You know, but they got some packed guys in there, and I like it. I like it a lot. All right, how about it, Lance? Who wins? I think Tennessee Titans. I thought they had a really, really good draft um, For this, this year. year or like two years down the road? I, I, I think it's a good I'm draft. Saying, I think it's good. a great draft. And when you look at Jeffrey Simmons, where they took him at 19, I think he's got a chance to be the best player in the draft, maybe the best defensive player. But they might have guys who all end up starters. A.J. Brown is a fantastic second-round pick. Nate Davis is going to come in and compete early for a starting spot. I think Amani Hooker is a good uh, nickel safety type of guy who can come in on some packages. DeAndre Walker has a lot of upside as a rusher, just has to get coached up. And then David Long is a high-impact playmaker. He just takes a lot of downhill shots, needs to play under control. And he didn't test, he didn't run as well as expected. I thought they had a really good draft for what they had in, the, in six rounds of picks. All these other guys stack up, you know, 12, 13 picks. They had six picks, and I thought they, they, they had hits, home runs, double singles with all six. Hey, Matt, who did you think had the best draft? Hmm, let me think. I'm going to go with the Los Angeles Chargers. Oh, oh, oh what yes, a Yes, I'm a show. I, I recognize Homer, I'm being a show here. Wow. 
Oh. But follow me. Uh, this is a team that made it to the final eight, uh, final four in the AFC. They had some holes. Uh, specifically, I think their number one need was that high safety. Uh, you cannot afford to pull Derwin out of the box. He is too good playing at the line right. of scrimmage. And now with Nasir Adderley, I think he's going to be your day one starter. I think Jerry Tillery is going to be a day one starter. And Run you look stopper. at what they had last year. Kaiser White was a starter from day one. Yep. was very effective before he got hurt. Chenin Wosu, by the end of the year, he had a, such a big impact in that playoff game against Baltimore. They expect their young guys to play. Gus Bradley is not afraid to throw them into the fire. I think the fact you get Adderley, Tillery up top, and just quickly on Easton Stick, they have been leaning on Cardell Jones now for two years, and this is the third year they're going in with him as their third string developmental quarterback. I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, if it has not happened by now, I like the idea of at the very least getting someone that's a winner, a captain, that has the traits that fit what they want to do in a Ken Wisenhunt system to at least push him. And I think the very least, Easton Stick can do that for the Bolts. Yeah, he certainly can push him. I don't know if he can overtake the number three job, but he's certainly good enough to push him. Overall, I, I mean, I think a couple teams also did well. I think the Oakland Raiders yeah, deserve right. some kudos. We talked about them did. yesterday, but I, I don't want to teams. double back on them. The Falcons also had some... Nice pick. So if you can build your team through the draft, it gives you an opportunity to be a relevant. I think relevant just for those teams contender. that are close, can you fill those needs? Wherever the holes were, wherever you stalled out on right. your way to the Super Bowl, can you fill or those needs? Or in the Super Bowl, right? You talk about the Los right. Angeles Rams right. having the ability to go out and get another runner, an explosive runner. You add some offensive line Fix help the there. the offensive line with your yep. departures. Yeah, right. you have some safety help. I mean, they, they did a really good job. Well, let's go from whole team to individuals. It is time for phenomenal players presented by Fios. All right, Bucky, your favorite pick of day two. Bryce Love. Day three. Oh. Bryce Love. Bryce Love. Stanford running back going to the Washington Redskins. Great pick. Great fit. Um, look, he was a Heisman Trophy finalist uh, a season ago. Ran for 1,700 yards. Did magical things in that offense. This year didn't have quite the year that he expected. Some of that was due to him with the injury. Some of that was due to the offensive line. But we're seeing right there the highlights. The guy can take it the distance, but is also physical enough to go inside and run the power play. People will find him attractive. The Redskins will find him attractive because I think he can be more than just a third down back in the league. Well, even, you know, they got a bunch of guys coming off of ACLs. So you add him there, it may not be right. necessarily right now, but down the road, you're going to have guys and love. So. Keep it going, Maurice. Oh, well, for me, it's Mac Wilson. And, and to me, we were always talking about where this guy was going to go. You get a day one starter in the fifth round for the Cleveland Browns. I think he comes in right away and he is going to start. And, and, a guy who has the most interceptions in that program at the linebacker position, you, you talk about a, a guy that flies around, plays with speed. Now, he has some things that he has to work on, mm -hmm. some, you know, social media stuff. He has to learn to just really focus on ball. But you know what? Guess what? You're in Cleveland, bro. But he didn't slide because of social media. Why did he slide? This is someone halfway through the college work football out. season. Well, he, he, got, he got hurt. Yeah, he, didn't, he didn't work out well. Just Bad game against Clemson. Just everything. Like, it was a perfect storm, a yeah. bad storm for just, him. Just but a you know, lot of things but Guess what? Him. I'm Cleveland. And we got a guy yeah, a in the round. fifth round that's, what I'm saying. that's going to end up starting for us and playing a long time. He's going to start. I mean, he's going to be a future starter. But sometimes the process heats you up or the process cools sure. you down. And he got cooled down in the process. Give me a phenomenal player here. I Lance. think Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, being able to get him in the fourth round by the New Orleans Saints. Mm -mm. I got to tell you, I, I really liked watching his tape this year. He had some issues with tackling last year. It got a lot better this year. They played him on the slot. Uh, the year before, they played him up top as a single high safety. He is he he's an athlete. He's got very good size. He's got cover skills. I'm not sure. I know there was just some teams who are up and down on him for whatever reason. But I thought I saw a guy who looks like an NFL caliber player who is very diverse scheme wise. And I think it really fits uh, in that division specifically where, you know, the Falcons are going to be one of your, you know, your, your top competition. But not just that, the way the game is changing, you need these hybrid guys who who can play dual safety spots, who can yep. play over the slot. I mean, that's where the league is going. My, uh, my guy is, is kind of twofold. As a college football fan, you like to see really great college football players that care about the sport, that care about their team, get rewarded uh, for great careers. And that's what happened with Trace, Trace McSorley. Uh, out of Penn State, a lot of people thought maybe this is just another great college football player that's not going to be ready to take that next step. But he gets drafted to a place that's perfect for him. Yeah. The system that they're running back. And even if you're just a quarterback in the room, 
Obviously, you're not going to be taking a job away from Lamar Jackson, but you're someone in that room that can help out. And God forbid, if you are pressed into action, if there are injuries, it's a system you are going to be comfortable running. On both sides of the ball, too, because Harbaugh said he, in his interview, he was like, look, we know he can play defense exactly. as well. Exactly. Well, remember, so, they, they asked him to work out at safety. Yeah. So He said no. He said no. But not, no you but, don't get that. But, you but don't now get you're in the room. Anymore. But I really, and this speaks to a longer discussion, but I really believe the Baltimore Ravens are all in on this system that they're using on offense with Trace McSorley right. and RG3. Now you have three quarterbacks that can run read option, zone option type stuff. So that offense that we kind of snickered at last year, we're going to get a chance to see if it works and if it can work for 16 games. Well, by the way, it, think about, you know, Lamar's a little bit slight. I'm not saying that Trace is, you know, a giant swole head, but you get close in the end zone, you think about Taysom Hill, and here's a dude that you're comfortable right. running that same system, and you don't mind him taking a couple he, licks He referenced there. Jim Harbaugh in the interview with Daniel Jeremiah and, 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 and the guys on the set. He referenced having three guys who were all athletes. Our, you know, RG3 was also a wide receiver. Yep. Right. He also had wide right. receiver background. Trace McSorley, we know. And he even mentioned, hey, who knows? We can put two of these guys, three of these guys same on time. the field at the same time. Mm. Now you've got some gimmick stuff that you can do that's hard to prepare for from day, you know, from game to game. And you saw the fits that it caused for teams down the stretch once Lamar became their starter. We'll keep the quarterback conversation going. These three men will make bold proclamations about when each quarterback will be starting come 2019. That was Phenomenal Players presented by Files. Back with quarterback conversation next. The Cardinals are surely excited. What do you bring to the table there? Uh, I'm ready to go. Uh, no matter what the situation is, um, I'm a winner. I love the game. And, you know, I, the one thing they'll get out of me is I'm going to go hard every time I touch the field. The New York Giants select Daniel Jones. You know, coming in, I didn't have uh, a whole lot of expectations. I was just excited for the opportunity to be here. And, um, you know, however it worked out, I would be, I'd be excited. But um, I'm thrilled to be part of the Giants. I'm looking forward to getting started. The Washington Redskins select Dwayne Haskins. It's unbelievable. I went to high school in this area. I feel like this area is really special. I'm going to be a workhorse. I'm going to work really hard. I'm going to push the guys around me. I'm looking forward to winning a whole bunch of football games. The Denver Broncos select Drew Locke. Is this the right team? Oh, this is the right team. This is the right team. We were eyeballing Denver from the beginning to be able to have this opportunity to go to the Denver Broncos and uh, be a Bronco, man. I, it's unreal. I'm so excited. Hello. DK. Yes, sir. Hey, it's John Schneider with, with the Seattle Seahawks. Hey. We're going to make you a Seahawk right here, okay? You ever dreamed about playing in the NFL? Yes, sir. All right. You ready to live your dream? Hey, Quinnen, this is Mike McKagan. Sir. How you doing, man? Doing good. Hey, you ready to become a New York Jet, huh? Yes, yeah, sir. Nick, what's up, man? Congrats. How's it going, my guy? Doing awesome, man. You pumped up? Yeah. A lot of worrying for nothing, man. It all worked out, so we're good. We knew it the whole time, so we had, we had no anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> I told you we had three first-round picks, and if you're there, we're going to get you. You want to be a Raider? Yes, sir. You fired up about it or what? Most definitely, most definitely. You promise me? I promise you all I got. Leadership, all right, man. That's why you're. Everything that's why I you're got. coming I'm here. Not good. All right. Yes, sir. I promise. You. I promise. You. I know you had to wait a little bit, but that doesn't matter because you're coming to Seattle. Man. You're gonna play. In, you're gonna yes, play with the Seahawks, and you're gonna catch fo footballs from Russell Wilson. And back as we wrap up the 2019 draft that got started with Kyler Murray, the first overall pick in the 2019 NFL draft. Kyler Murray goes number one. Baker Mayfield, shout out back to back, number one pick. Oklahoma quarterbacks yeah, wishes him well. And then <laughs> Jalen Hurts, of course, the grad transfer <laughs> well. from Alabama. So, uh, hey, yeah, why can't he get the Why mix? not, right? Why, watch him go off, too, and then we're going to start talking about him. Now it is time for top position rankings presented by Honda. And here are 10 quarterbacks selected. You see, obviously, Kyler Murray number one. Daniel Jones went six. Haskins, the third quarterback taken in the first round. Drew Locke slips into the second. And then we get to that second tier. And it really was uh, essentially team preference. And Greer goes ahead of Finley. Some people had Finley ahead of him. Some had Stidham even ahead of maybe Daniel Jones on some boards. And then you see you get all the way down to Gardner Minshew, who had a heck of a season out there at Washington State. And those are top position rankings presented by Honda. So that brings us to the conversation. And we start in Arizona. Uh, when does Kyler Murray make his first start? Oh, day one. Day one. He is the starter right 
Now, I know Who Brent else Hundley's was in the there. room? Brent Hundley. Oh, he's starting. Yeah, he's yeah, starting he right now. Back. When they decided to make this choice and made him the number one overall pick, and they sent Josh Rosen away, they handed the keys of the franchise to Kyler Murray. So it's no need to put on a little fake quarterback competition. He's going to be the starter. Everything that we do from this day forward is to get him ready to play day one, game one, as a starting quarterback. Okay, let's uh, let's shake it up a little bit. That seems obvious. It was a softball to get things started. When will Dwayne Haskins make his first start? Ooh. Day one. Day one. I don't think no he sits. Tina. What? I don't think he sits. Per explain day yourself, one? Maurice. Oh, you want me to explain? Oh, yes. this, this is why I say this. Okay, they're going to talk about the one-year production. You tell me the last person that threw 50 touchdowns in in any any season in, in college. Maybe Timmy Chang. Maybe. <laughs> my flag my flag football team out there. Oh, okay, okay. From, cool. uh, that, uh, right, so then, so then I'm going to take you this. So weren't the Redskins Maybe last one, year yeah. at the top of the NFC East? Maybe. Right before all the injuries hit? Yeah, they were. Now all of a sudden, we have our guy. I'm not going to mess around with Case Keenum. See, he can't take me all the way there. I know where he could get me. I don't need that. I just that need him to compete. That defense is pretty good, though. I need that defense to, is pretty right, good. I need him to compete with Case Keenum, compete with Colt McCoy. But I know what those two guys can do for me. This young man can take me to the, the next level. He's going to be the day one starter for me, Ooh, personally. But, but wow. see, you, you, said, know uh, you said Colt McCoy? Colt Brennan, I believe, threw 50 touchdowns. Colt oh, Brennan had a touch. I, I would just not jog rush. my memory. To me, I mean, you, this is the long play. When you draft a quarterback, you, you, you're you in it for the long haul. Exactly. And you can't just rush a guy out there who's played one year. Because he's got guys who are veterans who can help bring him along. No, I'm, I'm, I have to win now. This is What? This is, this, is, this is microwave. This isn't the oven. No. But who gives you the best chance to win starting day one? Is it Case Keenum to see whether or not he can manage yeah. this team, lean on a I defense? Mean, we, we know what Case Keenum okay. is. Now, the thing is, I wrote down in my notes that 2020 would be ideal. However, we've seen this before. Mm -hmm. We know what Case Keenum is. We saw it last year when he didn't have everything around him. And we took away all the magic rabbit's feet and the shamrocks. And, and the horseshoes, all that. Yeah, came like, yeah. He's not going to play like he played in Minnesota. Maybe he'll get a three-game run. Maybe. But Dwayne Haskins is going to start. I think the interesting so they're thing, They're preparing too, him right now to be the day one starter. The, the, the thing that sticks out to me with the Redskins is, you know, a lot of times quarterbacks are drafted by teams that are not good, that have a ton of needs. The Redskins were just decimated by injuries. If that O-line is healthy, it's a good O-line. If that D-line is healthy, it's a yeah. good D-line, and you don't have to ask him to do too much or not putting him in too much you, of harm's you way. Put, you, had, you, just, you have three running backs. We just talked about Bryce Love earlier. You have Adrian Peterson. You have Geist there. Never well, played. We haven't even thought about Chris Thompson. Yeah, right. yeah. Chris Thompson. You got all these dudes. There's no reason. It's, we always talk about teams build around that you put your guy in their Dak Prescott model, right? You build for Tony Romo. Well, why do you, you need to play him now? Why have, do you need to play? I have to He's win played now. one year of ball. I have to win now. Why? Or if you're if you're Jay my Gruden, job is on the line. Right, you got to save your job. Yeah, you if you save say your I'm job. I'm Jay Gruden, I'm an you're offensive about guy. Jay I'm yeah. going to develop Dwayne. Look how much better he is in week two from week one, week five from week oh, three. You he'll know, get on that's the field. How you save your job. Yeah, I mean, he's going to get on the field at some point as a starter. I don't. I don't think you have to rush him out there. All right, let's let's get to this one. All right, uh, Lance, you start us off. Who starts first? Daniel Jones. Uh, obviously in New York, drafted number six overall. Drew Locke behind Joe Flacco in Denver, or let's go Finley in Cincinnati. Ryan Finley behind Andy God, Dalton. that's a really good one because I'm not sure any of those guys start this year. You're either going to have to have bad play or injury because I can't see any of them upsetting the You don't the think incumbents. Cincinnati or New York get off to a bad start? Uh, I think New York is the one. I, I think the odds are New York. Joe, Joe Flacco is pretty durable, so – I would other than this last season briefly, but I would say, uh, and man, and he just, and all right, if you're not going to commit, yeah. someone else make. I'm going to say Daniel Jones. Listen, we took him at number six. Whoa, the pressure, whoa, whoa, the pressure from the media. Years. Listen, you're, you're right. I heard that, but all of a sudden, Eli's not doing his radio show. There's a lot of stuff going on, and when you draft someone at number six, Bucky, we all know this. We all know wow. this. All of a sudden, the media starts chirping. The fans are like, "Look, Eli's not playing well. Give the kid a chance." I was a part with Blaine Gabbert. Blaine Gabbert was supposed to sit for two years with David Garrard. David gets hurt. The fans we end up playing chirping. Luke McCown. All of a sudden, it's play Blaine, play Blaine. You we think the fans are going to chirp to play Daniel Jones? They, they've. Have you seen well, all they the probably videos want to see it. I mean, I would they, imagine yeah, if, at some point, it. at yeah. some point, if Eli plays as bad as he did last year, they're going to the be chirping. Games, let's yes. see what we got. No question. All right, let's uh, let's talk about. Rashawn Gary and uh, and Greedy Williams and a whole host of players, A.J. Brown, they all let us chronicle their journeys to the NFL as part of Destination Nashville, Drive to the NFL, presented by the 2019 Lincoln Nautilus. Here's a sneak peek.
We get to do this one time. You ain't gonna get no second chances. I expect to pull in a show. Nothing less than that. Let's go! Yeah, that hate the grind and sweat the blood of time. I'm motivation. I work too hard, too long, and I'll be in the conversation. I remember when LaShawn said to me, I want to be a professional football player. And it's here. You know, I want to be a pro boy. I want to be a Hall of Famer. I want to be a Super Bowl champion. Just think about, you know, who you're doing it for. Get you fired up. That's my motivation. Yeah, my motivation. You got to go out and prove it. At the end of the day, he's just too big, fast, and explosive. He's going to go in the top ten. He can wow them with the athletic potential. The NFL draft is now officially on. You can check out NFL.com slash Destination Nashville to see how it all unfolded for Williams, Brown, and Gary on their journey to the 2019 NFL Draft. Well, the Seahawks came into this one with, I think, four picks. They ended up like 12 or something like that. And uh, here is a look at DK Metcalf, shirtless. At this point, I wonder if he has a shirt. He is meeting with Seattle uh, at the Combine. That prompted Pete Carroll to take his shirt off, of course. And here is Marcus Grant talking about his fantasy impact. Day one guys get all the hype, but there are some day two guys in this draft that you should consider that could make an impact on your fantasy team. We'll start at wide receiver. DK Metcalf blew up the combine, but he had to wait a while before he heard his name called by the Seattle Seahawks. He is an excellent deep ball threat, which is great because now he's paired with a great deep ball thrower in Russell Wilson. And if Doug Baldwin does indeed retire, that opens up a lot of targets in that Seahawks offense. Metcalf's teammate A.J. Brown ends up with the Tennessee Titans. Brown was considered by some to maybe be the top wide receiver prospect in the entire draft. Now he offers a versatile target to pair alongside Corey Davis. Now with Davis, Brown, and the returning Delaney Walker, it becomes a make-or-break year for Marcus Mariota down in Tennessee. A couple of running backs of note. Miles Sanders, the Pittsburgh native, stays in state goes to the Philadelphia Eagles, but he enters a crowded Philly backfield with Jordan Howard and Corey Clement. That means he's going to have to compete in training camp to get some touches. But if Sanders can prove to be good in pass protection, he could earn an expanded role in that Philadelphia offense. And then there's David Montgomery. He stays in the Midwest and goes to the Chicago Bears. Montgomery was a total package of size and skills and was the engine to that Iowa State offense. He can fill in nicely where Jordan Howard once was, especially if he becomes a downhill runner. Still, Montgomery is likely to be in a committee situation with Tariq Cohen in that Matt Nagy offense. There you have it, some guys drafted in day two that could make an impact for your fantasy squad. Speaking of fantasy impact, be sure to keep an eye out for the new and improved NFL Fantasy app. Download it soon, coming to iPhone and Android. Fantastic fantasy fodder from Marcus Grant there. When we return, we're talking steals. Who did we feel like made some hay here in the late rounds? We'll do it when we return. You don't bring a gun to a football fight. Oh, my word. Oh. With the 103rd pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select... Hakeem Butler, wide receiver, Iowa State. With the 112th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Washington Redskins select... Bryce Love, running back, nice. Stanford. With the 116th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select... Amani Hooker, DB, Iowa. By the way, that's, that's the first pug in NFL draft history. Wrong. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, even the pen, he's got the pen. That's on. a first round pug right there. Mo Gabba is going to be the first person to ever announce a draft pick written in Braille. The Baltimore Ravens select Ben Powers, Oklahoma guard. And with the 129th pick of the 2019 NFL draft, the Oakland Raiders select Isaiah Johnson, defensive back, Houston. Y el elegido con el número 130, los LA Chargers eligieron a Drew Tranquil, linebacker de la Universidad de Notre Dame. Yeah. Bienvenido a LA. And with the 134th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Los Angeles Rams select Greg Gaines, defensive tackle from Washington. 
our Cincinnati Bengals select Michael Jordan, guard, guard from Ohio State. Ohio State. Here's your the 2019 NFL Draft with the Denver Broncos. We select Justin Holland, linebacker, Oregon. All right, there we go. The Houston Texans select Charles Amanahu, defensive end, Texas. Thanks, Matt Money. Live from an NFL original town, Hammond, Indiana. I'm Hammond Mayor Thomas McDermott, Jr. here at the Hammond Sportsplex with the Hammond Vipers and the Hammond Patriots. Pleased to announce the 200th draft pick in the 2019 NFL Draft for the Los Angeles Chargers. They select Emike Egbule, a linebacker from Houston. Congratulations. Ah, oh, I love seeing that. The old Mayor Tom McDermott in a brand new sporting facility that used to be the Woodmore Mar Mall, where I'd sneak behind and smoke <laughs> cigarettes when yeah. I was a little kid. And now look at what they got going there. Is that All where right. your voice came from? Uh, yeah, I think it might have been. Uh, I'm kidding. I wasn't smoking cigarettes. I was shopping at merry-go-round for the fart machines. That's what I was doing. All right. <laughs> Uh, how about some tweets from the past few days? There's Blake Shelton with uh, Steve Kime as, of course, the NFL descended upon country music's epicenter here in the States. Uh, Steve Kime with the number one pick. John McClain, of course, who has covered the Texans for a long time. Someone you know. Um, and you see a tweet he had here with Titus Howard uh, on his mother affectionately calling him Weenie. His nickname growing up. Not too many call me that now. Uh, funny because everybody's like, hey, we can't call you Weenie now. We've got to call you Hot Link. And uh, there's Watt saying sometimes it writes itself. So uh, certainly Titus did not do himself any favor sharing that on social media. Also got some more reaction. You see Tom Brady. Oh, he was, he was everybody a loved. Goal. Not the first, mm. not the second, third. Yeah, I think we all do get it, Tom. Thanks. I get it, Tom. And finally, Chase Winovich. Ah, uh, go blue. Huh? Yeah, yeah a little brothers. Michigan and Michigan. Oh, we got one more bonus content. Extra credit. LeBron James talking Josh Hart, his teammate there. Mm. Hope all the past on him pay for it, but I am rooting for your skins. No way, Jose. Talking about Dwayne Haskins there. Of course, LeBron was going to go to Ohio State if he had decided to go to college before it, entering it, the It's NBA. so funny, LeBron. Like, you're from Akron, Ohio. How are you a Cowboys fan? He's like Fabiano. Exactly. Oh, yeah, he did all the best. Yankees. Yeah. Now like, he's a like Laker. Yankees, Cowboys, Lakers. Just bounces, yeah. Buck yeah, is just upset because he's a Carolina fan like Fabiano. I mean, why not? Just, so there's that. Okay, he's Let's uh, get the biggest uh, steals of the 2019 NFL draft. And we heard Marcus talk about him, and I know a lot of it was based on a workout, but just kind of a lot of it's fit too, right? DK Metcalf, especially depending on the situation yeah. surrounding Doug Baldwin and his potential retirement, a steal where he was selected. I think so because of the speed and explosiveness. When you get a guy in the second round who's able to do what he's able to do in terms of stretching the field, he can stretch the field, take the top off the defense, make it miserable for defenders to try and deal with him. Also, when you look at the Seattle Seahawks history, they have a history of big wide receivers with playmaking ability. They did it with Jermaine Kearns. They did it with BMW. Big Mike Williams came back yeah. and made an appearance. They've thrown some guys out. My hero from the Super Bowl, Foot Locker guy, Cassidy Williams. Is, is Chris, I mean, Matthews. Chris Matthews. Chris Matthews. Right. I mean, that's what they do. They like big receivers. He's a big receiver with speed. They'll try and develop him to the point where he can do some other stuff but they have a vertical playmaker now for Russell Wilson. It's funny, too, when you talk about the Seahawks. Uh, the, the receivers, phenomenal blockers. So you're a big, strong guy. You're going to block a lot, mm -hmm. but then we're going to be able to sneak you out on deep overs and yeah, posts. Yeah, play actions. Yeah, play because that's what Let's you're going to do. Go. They're going to run the ball how many times a game? Oh, we're going to run it 35. Yeah. And then, then play actions. Just yeah. run that way real fast. If someone gets in your way, turn. Yeah. Other than that, <laughs> you're good. Uh, how about Montez Sweat? Well, I mean, Montez Sweat is, is going to potentially be a steal. When you looked at how... The, um, the pass rushers, really, you, you roll out the pass rushers, you say, okay, who's got the height, weight, speed, who's got the production, who's got the traits? Montez Sweat is a guy who checked them all. He, he had 4 4 one, 40, 36-inch arms almost. He's got 22 and a half sacks in the SEC over two years, 30 tackles for loss. He's got everything. Now, there's an issue with the heart co you know, condition and concerns about that, but uh, Montez Sweat, I think, was also in a situation where as he began to fall, teams just say, 
ah, we're not going to touch him. If he's falling now, we're not going to touch him. And sometimes that can snowball Redskins on you. Went up and got him. But I think yep. it's a pretty good spot for him, to be honest yeah, with you. Well, and if the Redskins didn't get him, the, the Raiders are going to take him. But for me, this is a guy, you talk about checking off all the boxes. We saw him dominate at the Senior Bowl. Yeah. You saw him dominate at the Combine. You saw all those things. For me, to get him at 20, I was it 27 or 26? 26. 26. He, like, that, that is a steal. He was a process guy we talked about. He was getting pushed yeah. up at one time inside the top five we Well, thought. then this other thing. You talked about Ryan Kerrigan being there yes, yesterday. Opposite. All of a sudden now, we're sliding to Kerrigan. You're one-on-one -on -one with the right tackle, and we have some pressure coming through with some of those Alabama guys. Well, you beat a couple guys, and all of a sudden, you're 10, 12 sacks. And speaking of pressure, Bucky, we saw the photo of him shaking hands with Tom Brady. How about Chase Winovich and how he fits in with what the Patriots do? Love how he fits in with the Patriots. The Patriots are all about a few different traits when they're looking at prospects. Smart, tough, physical, versatile. When you look at Winovich, he checks off all the boxes. Smart guy, tough guy off the edge, very physical in his play, and then he's versatile. I think he's a guy that not only can rush the passer, I think he can drop a little bit within reason. The way that the Patriots play, this guy reminds me a lot of what Rod Ninkovich has been able to do for them for years on end. I expect him to be a longtime player and contributor to that defense. A lot of people forget about that too because he's been retired a couple years, but also remember this too, he's a fifth-year senior. He was a redshirt senior, so he's played a lot of football. He's been in a lot of odd defenses, seen a lot. He's a guy that you can move around and be in that versatile defense. That the it seemed like, like every time the Colts were ready to pick uh, early on, they kept trading back, and it's like wide receiver, wide receiver. Well, they finally did it, and Paris Campbell ends Man. up slipping to him. I love Paris Campbell. For me, I had Paris Campbell inside the top 28 picks of this year's draft, and then he ends up falling to 59. You know, sometimes you got to be careful about pigeonholing guys in the Ohio State offense. I did that with Mike Thomas. I learned my lesson because Mike's become a much better player. Paris Campbell, there's some tape where he goes deep and just, mm -hmm. just takes the top all the way off and chops all the knots. And I think with Paris Campbell, I think once you get him outside of the Ohio State offense, where we know he can catch and run, but once you start utilizing him down the field, yes. what that's going to do for Andrew Luck is give him – another toy to operate with because you don't know how he's going to be used. We know how T.Y. is going to be used, but now you got all that speed there. you got pass-catching tight ends. Yes. Um, I really like what they did here getting Paris Campbell, and I think he's an ascending player. And finally, uh, Maurice, why don't you take a player that wasn't drafted, but maybe oh, if drafted. it works out, the biggest steal of the entire draft in, a, in exchange of a late second round pick and a fifth for Josh Rosen. Yeah, I think, again, you know, Josh is kind of in a unique situation where you get drafted, your coach gets fired, all these things just happen. You have to deal with a lot of nonsense uh, that I personally feel like the Arizona Cardinals didn't have to do that to him. You kind of could have traded him beforehand. But then you go to Miami. And let's remember, Jim Caldwell is a coach down there. And Jim Caldwell is known as a guy who fixed Joe Flacco when he was broken. Mm -hmm. He fixed Matthew Stafford when he was broken. So you're going to go to a coach that has a ton of knowledge on how to help quarterbacks in a system that is known about being smart and anticipating and those type of things, what Rosen does well. And so for me, I think this, if, if he goes out there, he gets an opportunity to play. You saw some of the draft picks where they're, they're drafting running backs uh, like Miles Gaskin, tackles, guards, different players to help protect them. All of a sudden, he may win a couple games and be, may be their guy, and you got him for a second-round pick for $2 million a year. Well, and, and you know what? There was a lot circulating uh, after the trade that says even if he's not your starter, even if he's your backup, if you believe him to be a capable backup, he's still inexpensive for right. the next four years because of that deal uh, where the Arizona Cardinals picked up the signing bonus in the first year, and he's only on the hook for $6 million over the next mm -hmm. three years. Um, when he was drafted number 10 overall, the Cardinals trade up, it was a little polarizing, his reaction. Pro, was I'm just problems, saying it was, it was polarizing. It was. There were people that liked it. They liked the chip. I loved it. There were people that didn't like it. Universally approved. Taking the high road, showing a lot of class uh, on his way out of Arizona. I just wanted to say a couple things after everything that just happened. Uh, Cardinals fans, thank you so much for all of the continued support this past year. Uh, I know we didn't win as many games as we all would have hoped, but I had an unbelievable time here in the desert. Um, unfortunately, my time here is coming to an end, uh, but you guys are really getting a hell of a player in Kyler Murray, and he's going to do great things for the Red Sea. Um, Kyler, I just want to congratulate you and your family on getting drafted. Uh, Arizona is a really special place, and you're going to love playing and living here. Uh, it's my teammates, staff, and everyone who worked at the facility. Uh, I can't thank you enough for all the support and great memories you've created this past year. Um, I'm really wishing all of the Arizona Cardinals uh, the best of luck moving forwards. And uh, Miami, I couldn't be more excited to become a Dolphin. Uh, I'm ready to attack this new chapter in my life uh, and give you guys everything I have each and every day. Uh, my bags are packed, and I'm on a flight first thing tomorrow morning. Uh, so get ready, South Florida, and go Fins. Um, and Kyler, one more thing. Uh, an awesome two-bedroom uh, in Old Town just came onto the market. So let me know if you're interested, and I think I can get you a pretty good deal.
With that being said, little, with all that being said, yeah, I like that. I'm a Dolphins fan now. Oh, that's oh, right. the fourth team. I'm a root really? for the Dolphins. Yeah, go. why not? Well, why not? Because of that. Yeah, look, I give him credit because I felt like he was unfairly beat up for uh, his natural reaction after being traded. Anyone that has been dumped, traded, yeah. uh, cut, you can have some of those feelings. And you can be in your feelings. You want to unfollow everybody. It's, it's, it's like breaking up with a girlfriend. Yeah. You don't want to see all the pictures on Instagram. I don't want to so see it anymore. Didn't see it. He didn't want to see it. So now he's recovered. He did the apology. Now he can move on. Close that chapter to go to the next one. We'll see how it works out. You're a Dolphins fan now or no? Uh, no, that has nothing to do with yeah, it. Go, hey, go Fins. Go get you a nice uh, teal-colored Henley like he picked up at the Old Navy there. <laughs> when we return, we'll take to the defensive side of the field, project which one of the guys drafted could be a defensive MVP in the next five years. Hollywood. <laughs> hey, we just got that boy Hollywood, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. Greedy! Greedy? Huh. All right. <laughs> Greedy. Yes, sir. Smiles there. Ed Oliver was all smiles Thursday night in Nashville. The ninth overall pick has drawn comparisons to someone you know very well, Maurice Aaron Donald. So let's take a look at Next Gen Stats powered by AWS as they compare Oliver and Darnold's draft scores, which factors in a player's measurables and college production as well as their combine and pro day performances. Mm, that is funny. Mm, production 99, athleticism 99 overall. 99. 99. Size don't matter. That's what I'm trying to tell you, kids. Uh, it does matter a little bit. No, not, not there. Just and that the was Next Gen Stats powered by AWS. Boy, the Bills would be awfully lucky. And remember, Aaron Donald slipped as well. Size does matter. That's what people said yeah, when he and slid. That, and, and all and of now, a sudden, he's 20 sacks exactly, a year. Exactly. Back-to-back -back defensive keep, MVP is, yeah. awards. Speaking of which, back-to-back -back defensive MVP awards, why don't we each uh, go ahead and grab somebody that we think could end up being a defensive MVP, let's say, in the next five years? I'm going to go Josh Allen. The Kentucky, one? the one that played in Buffalo. No, 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 no. Because he'll be making all them tackles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Stop. You feel well me done. Stop. Well done. No, the Kentucky pass rusher Josh Allen, <laughs> the edge rusher who is going to have his opportunity with the Jaguars. And look, that's a team that you're playing in a division where you're going to be throwing the ball around a little bit. He has a chance to go get quarterbacks. There's a there's a team that I cover in Houston that's had some problems in pass oh, protection. Yeah. A little bit. I believe that Josh Allen is one of those guys at with the way that he's ascending as a as a as a as a quarterback hunter. I think that his traits are going to be easily coached up, and I think he's going to make a big push as a pass rusher within the first two years. I mean, I like Josh Allen, but look, yep. man, you go ahead and put the name on the trophy. It's going to be Ed Oliver. Oh, Easy wow. Ed is going to be in the mix for the defensive MVP just because of the way that he plays and how he's going to be utilized in Buffalo's defense. When you look at Ed Oliver, first step quickness, 
100% effort each and every time. Do you see him play a little rodeo in the backfield? This is what you see when you watch the tape. Sean McDermott wants some of those blue collar guys. He has one as the centerpiece of his defense. That's why he's going to walk away. The They're trophy. not going to have him playing zero technique, though, right? No, no, no. They're going to have him playing three technique. Okay, let's just move on a little bit. Undersized three technique. Yeah, that, that's good. I think that uh, for me, it's going to be Nasir Adderley that. that the Chargers uh, picked up. And it's, and it's not because. Uh, you doing that for I, money? No, 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 no. It's because you, of all the pieces around him. You have Derwin James who put pressure on the quarterback. You have Bosa, Ingram. All these guys can get to the quarterback. Guess who's going to sit back there and get picks? Reminds me of Earl Thomas when Seattle was rolling. Mm. You just sit in the back. You don't got much time to throw the ball. This young man, can, he can cover sideline to sideline. He is that middle of the field oh, safety that they're to, looking for. Yeah, he's, right? You're going to have to hit a little bit more. That's Remember, okay. Trey Boston led safeties two years ago with five That's interceptions right. Eddie Jackson did him wrong. You see, yeah. you see what I'm saying? And so Bob. now you go draft your guy here. But what about this, though? I, I, what about this? What, like, what is that? Listen, man. It's not, look. What is that? Play. He can play. That's a, I that's don't know what thump. that is. That's, what that that's a touchdown. That's right, a touchdown. Who are they playing? Who, what team is that? Who, who's going to let a guy tell run him over and just start looking at him? Tell him, buddy. Tell him who it is. No, I thought it was the main black it's bear. Not it's Maine. not, though. It's no, not the it's main. The it's Wildcats. 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 So, yeah. No, no, not I, know, I know a main black bear. That ain't. That is not what that's they That's not they, what the black bear. No, that's, that's not the style of football the black bears play. No, it's not. All right. I'm going to go. See, because I got my thinking cap on. Jeffrey Simmons, because it's the next oh, five man. years. So after he takes a year off, or maybe three quarters of a year off, you know the domination that this man wreaked, the havoc he wreaked on all the SEC from that inside position. Hey, if I told you Fletcher Cox could be the defensive MVP in the next few years, you'd say, no, I could see that happening. Possibly. Dude plays the same way, man. And plus, it's a it's a team that relies on oh. defense to make big plays. They take care of the ball on offense. You know how Brable wants to play. Simmons is the guy. No brainer. Yeah, but you got to get sacks. I gave you a lot of good information there tonight. Tackles Tackles for loss don't count. He doesn't have sack production, but that's one of those things when you watch him, you you see him in the backfield. It's just he doesn't have rush instincts yet. You got to get that. Sometimes you you can't get those. You're born with that. Oh. We all appreciate defense here, but the people watching, they like the offense. They want some sizzle. So let's shift to the other side, and I believe, Bucky, we'll start with you. Best chance to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. Okay, Money, if we were ranking something, and we were ranking it from 1 to 10, okay, one to number ten. 1 would mean what? Uh, probably not good. No, number 1. If we're ranking it from 1 to 10. Oh, okay. Number 10 yeah, is yeah, the best, right? one guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, who's the number one pick in the draft? Let me think. Callum Murray. So, Callum Murray's going to be the guy that's going to be the MVP. The Electric when he has the ball in his hand. This is everything that you want. If I could create a quarterback, Callum Murray's the Five? guy. I thought size matters, though. It does on defense, not on offense. Oh, okay. On offense, because <laughs> we want to run around and make plays. He has the it. juice. He has the sauce. He's, he's, he's exactly what... Cliff Kingsbury wants. That's why we're going to see him as your MVP. We saw Pat Mahomes. We will eventually see Baker. Callum Murray's next in line. Lance. Well, this is rookie of the year because I don't want to put this guy on MVP, but I do think he could be rookie of the year. Yeah, this is rookie of the year. Offensive yeah. rookie of the year. Bucky's going straight ahead. He's just giving uh, him MVP. The... Just give him a trophy. Give uh, him all the trophies. Uh, you both of them. One time. Yeah, it wouldn't be the first talk, one man. MVP and rookie of the year. I'm going with uh, David Montgomery. And I think it's because he has a great situation right now in, in I Chicago. You, I see you going a to the running back great position. great situation in Chicago. We saw how Jordan Howard came in and had an immediate impact. They're better up front now. Their quarterback now is, you know, a little more advanced. They're getting some help around them. they got a good defense. I think you could see him with double-digit touchdowns next year. Don't tell Falcon. The, 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 only, the, only, the only problem with that is the what? coach He's has nice, to, though, isn't he? He is, but the coach has to want to run the ball because Coach Matt Nagy wants to throw it all over the yard. He doesn't like to run the ball a lot. So but when he you see catch it, the ball, though. He can catch. That's fine, but you still got to turn around and run. I mean, Saquon won it because I mean, of what? He had rushing yards and receiving yards. You just can't have receiving yards because they call you as a, a wide receiver. Touchdowns. I'm going to go with the guy, you know, before we were – they're pounding the rock. Pound yeah. the rock. Who are we going Josh with? Josh Jacobs. Uh, uh. Think about this. I'm running against an unloaded box all the time. It's the people around him, just like Nasir Adderley. You have Antonio Brown. You have Tyrell Williams. The box is going to be unloaded. They got to cover those guys. So I can turn around and hand the ball to this young man 20, 25 times a game. He's fresh leg. Let him get going. He's going to give you a double-digit touchdowns, guaranteed. All right? He's going to give you 1,000 yards. Guaranteed. 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 Yeah, but stamp it. How do you want to do it? Okay. This ain't no rain check. Okay. This, this ain't none of that. This is guaranteed. You can take the base. Guaranteed. Direct deposit. Really? No, he said Do- 1100 I mean, he's never done that in his collegiate career. But he's going to so do it today. We're going to do it in the pros. We're going to do it today. And I'm going to wow. tell you this again. We just give you have an- away. No, I'm not giving away. He's going to earn it. But Antonio with Antonio you Brown on the think outside. You're going to load the box. Because Derek Carr lets go of the ball if he sees a shadow. Two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, <laughs> two that, seconds. That clock Do you is think all time quarterback? 
That's well, fine. Well, it does in 2007. It goes out. You can say all you want to. All you can laugh, kiki all you want to. He, understand. He can catch. He can catch, too. And not one corner in the league right now wants to be one-on-one with Antonio Brown. So I don't think any defensive coordinator is going to let Antonio Brown hit him. If the wide receiver gets past the mailbox, I can't throw it. Yeah, he did. You know what? I appreciate, I appreciate you mentioning the name Brown because the offensive rookie of the year is named Brown. Hollywood. Brown. Hollywood. That's right. A guy that they, they may throw the ball two times to him again. <laughs> hey, guess what? <laughs> <laughs> that's the only guy they're going to throw it Jet to. Sweeps. Yeah. <laughs> Jet sweeps count too. The, the, I like it. him, but it's, I mean, we're, we're option offense. He's exactly. He has 300 gonna, yards. He's, he's the Army wide receiver. How many targets are they going to have in a game? Ooh, probably like eight or nine. No, how many are going to have? Probably Ooh. eight or nine. No. <laughs> that's all it's going to be. And he said it. Jet sweeps. It's going to. He's going to be a major impact. He'll end up being. Your offensive rookie. Make uh, sure y'all clip this year. off, because when Josh Jacobs wins, I'm, I'm wanting all my money. I, you I know what? I'm more it. interested in clipping it off so I can see when people aren't stacking the box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what I'm more interested. Dude, they definitely. <laughs> <see it. laughs> all right. When we return, uh, we are going to look at well, obviously Ooh. emotional day. Uh, draft day is for a lot of folks. Also, our predictive analytics expert Cynthia Freeland is going to give you a couple nuggets you're not going to want to miss next. Congrats, family, for real. I know your mama's smiling down on you right now. I know that, you know that, now the world know that. What's going on, brother? Wait a minute. You ain't tell me it was gonna be him. Hall of Famer, what's happening, big dog? Congratulations, man, you did it, you did it, bro. Look, I know Dave County super excited to have another one of their sons representing them in the league. Oh, big, big bro. Big bro. Yo. What up, big bro? Tell me, tell me, tell me, how you doing? Hey, man, I'm doing great. You know I'm already out here. They enjoying it. They loving you. That's time to show the whole world what you can do. You're a hell of a player. Your new team just got the best player in the draft. I'm glad to be a part of the organization. Bro. I'm glad to play with you. I already hit you up talking about you. You know, you know how I feel. Hey, I'm ready. Yeah, bro. I'm, ready I'm excited ride. for you, bro. First of all, I want to um, congratulate you on a on a dream, man. This is This is what it's about. Congratulations, man. You're, you're coming into a great situation. Well, I want to say thank you for representing Young Money as well. Congratulations to your team. Y'all got the best con in the draft. I just want to say thank you for representing Young Money as well, man. I'm going to do all your interviews and stuff right now, man. And, uh, you know, it's a dream come true. I just work hard for it, but remember, enjoy your time with your family, man. Relax, man. Tomorrow we have all this business stuff, man. You're coming to the greatest fans in sports. I know that. And once and you will see an atmosphere like you've never seen before. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> What'd you think, man? That's, that's yeah, huge. that's big. That's huge coming from Lil Wayne, one of my favorite rappers. That's big. That's crazy for sure, man. Wayne the GOAT, man, and anything, man. I signed him your money. I just want to give him an opportunity, man. Hey, yeah. man, sky's the limit right now. Appreciate it. Welcome to Buffalo, baby. Appreciate it. Best day of my life, by far. Man, that's amazing, man. This day just getting better and better. And here you see our Mike Garofolo tweeting out that Jaguars defensive end Josh Allen told local media he couldn't jump up and celebrate when the Jags took him at 7 because he was watching Monsters University on his phone with his son, <laughs> Wesley. So a big week for Allen, who married uh, his now wife, Caitlin, last Thursday. So wonderful start to their life together. A big congratulations to the Allen family. And how about our predictive analytics, analytics expert, Cynthia Freeland, giving you the forecast of what her model says was the best team in the draft. When evaluating a team's draft class, I look at the impact newly acquired players have on expected win totals for their teams this season. No team improved their outlook for the 2019 season more than the Jacksonville Jaguars. By scooping up my number two overall prospect, Josh Allen, with the seventh pick, Jacksonville could lead the NFL in sacks, as Allen's presence will help the other Jaguars pass rushers. Scooping up Juwan Taylor in the second round will help keep Nick Foles clean where he excels. The Green Bay Packers did a great job of complementing their free agent additions by selecting defensive end Rashawn Gary and safety Darnell Savage in round one. On day two, Green Bay helped Aaron Rodgers and the offense by picking interior lineman Elton Jenkins and tight end Jay Sternberger. Entering the draft, I did not have the Jaguars or the Packers winning their respective divisions, but after strong draft classes, that could change. 
Great stuff, as always, from Cynthia. Time now for Cap on the Draft, presented by New Era. And we are going to acknowledge teams with just a tip of the cap. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you like the whole draft. Maybe you like a couple picks. Bucky, why don't you get us started? Well, you got to like all of it if you're going to give them the half. So I'm going to tip my hat to the Atlanta Falcons you for are. what they were able to do. Yeah, because Matt oh, Ryan. Nice. It's all about at Matty Ice. And look, we want to make sure that he's protected. So Chris Lindstrom is a little early for some people, but because he's solid, we're going to go with it. Caleb McGeary, but also... Kendall Sheffield, we got a fast guy to play on that turf. We got to deal with those fast receivers okay. in the division. We're going to rock with it. All right. How about it, uh, Maurice? I mean, Bucky talked about it earlier, but Bill, you did a great job. I mean, again, Damian Harris, you get him late. Uh, you talk about uh, Nikhil Harry. I mean, they went out and got brand name Love guys it. that can come and make plays Winovich. that fit their system. Winovich, all these different players, they fit what they do. Then you draft a Stanford punter. In the fifth round to help with some taxes and maybe some other stuff. <laughs> oh, no, no. It's all good, man. We, yeah, we smart to, guys to, out there, you yeah, know. Yeah, we're just trying to make sure the locker room keeps it up. It's not about the GPA now. It's about making sure our four our four hundred one k is going the right direction. <laughs> okay. I mean, Lance, come on, man. I know you got blowback for oh, the Cowboys. Oh my God. No one's gonna tweet you that want, out. Want, no one's gonna put that want, on the gram. Oh, <laughs> really <laughs> rocking. Right. Look, screen cap this, okay? Because I think Hold the Texans. Do it again. Do it again. Do the Millie Rock again. <laughs> you got to do it. Mm. Wait, wait. Yeah. You'll sell the whole thing. Listen, yeah, if you're gonna do the it. Houston Texans, there's different ways to approach a draft. And what they did this year is they knew they needed help at tackle. They knew they needed help at cornerback. They needed immediate help. They got two tackles that I think can come in and start right away. Now, Titus Howard is green on the left side, and so it'll take a little time. And Max Sharping on the right side may take a little time, but it was bad last year. So they got two tackles. They got two corners. I think they filled some immediate holes for a team that actually, you know, obviously has a chance to go somewhere. So I like what they did this year with the with with what they had to deal with, which wasn't a great tackle draft and it wasn't a great cornerback draft where they were picking. My uh, tip of the cap goes to your neck of the woods to some degree, Maurice. Mm. The San Francisco 49ers. They didn't overthink it. They took the number one player in the draft on most boards and Nick Bosa to compliment the opposite side and the pressure up the middle with DeForest Buckner. Uh, they have got a heck of a defensive line up there now. Then they get Debo Samuel, uh, who I think is going to step in and be probably their best wide receiver straight away. <laughs> and then they come back in the fifth, sixth round and get Caden Smith at tat end. I oh. like an awful lot out of Stanford, so some late round value Jaylen there as Hurd well. Too. Yeah, and Jalen Hurd, and, and you know when you have an offensive mind like Kyle, like Kyle um, Shanahan, jeez, Shanahan. Uh, word is that he's going to get creative with Jalen Hurd, and might go back to what he originally was doing there the at six Tennessee. Six four receiver, exactly. Running back, running back as well. You'll start to see him move him around. Maybe so a nice a new left bell. I believe they call that the Maybe. queen. On the chessboard oh, is what we're talking about with Jalen Hurd. So, uh, yeah, tip out a cap there to the San Francisco 49ers. All right. Uh, now that we are done with that. Oh, by the way, uh, the tip of the cap is courtesy of New Era with yeah, these sweet real quick. Where's draft my single? caps. The Can city flags. Single? The city flags. No, you can't get one. You can't. Oh, man. Uh, Nashville, by the way, this from the Titans sets a new NFL draft attendance record. Over a half a million fans crowded on Broadway there <laughs> uh, and partied. Uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It looked like the strip in Vegas. Reminded me of the Vegas strip on New Year's Eve. Yeah, when they uh, block all the rolls up and exactly. all the bachelorette parties that were there. Oh, you know, yeah. It was, it was a lot going on. It was a good old party. time out there. Okay, where's my single? Get your single. New Era, send me a couple of these, please. <laughs> you really did your thing with this. I mean, the Atlanta. These are nice. I mean, these are these are really nice. Well, my, the my, city flags. My, yeah, my, my, my kids love them. They wear hats all the time. All right. Shout out for the All kids. right. Are we done with the PSA? Guess what? I'm just saying. I mean, why not? I got, to, I got I mean, a little done? memo for you. You are a great job. N I'll put it on Instagram. NFLshop.com. Yeah, I don't did. know what that means. Company yeah, well, man right I there. Can give you the, I can give you there the you discount. Go. They got the 300 logo I on the back. We are doing draft, grade, draft grades show. Uh, Bucky and DJ going to be live on NFL.com Tuesday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Thank you so much for watching us here as the are 2019. We done? We're done. It? NFL draft is done. We are done. And to play us out, what does that mean? Play us out. What does that mean? It play has to be out. a song. Uh, we we are going to have draft letters, as a matter of fact, from a host of the draftees and uh, the reaction they had from their family celebrating their big day baby boy, my yay yay. And you always ask me, you say, Mom, why are you looking at me like that? And I look at you because I'm just so amazed of the person that you've become. And you used to ask me all the time, was things on TV real? Well, this time, <laughs> this time it's real. This big bro, I want to say congratulations. We made it. We definitely made it. 
all those years of hard work that we put in, going out there to Oswald Park, no money in our pocket. Mama got to give me $5 for gas. It all paid off. I'm so, so excited for what the next chapter holds for you. I miss my dad every day, and I feel his presence here. I clearly recall the day when I told you of his passing. Know that your Papa D would be very proud of you today. My baby boy, this is your shot. This is your chance. You're the one who made this happen. Well, my life, I don't think you know what you've done for me, but you've kept me fighting. You've kept me being strong, and you just keep me pushing and just looking to be the best person I can. You just bring me so much joy, and I just thank you for that. You know just how much this day means to me. Like, you're probably crying like a big-ass baby right now. Um, but, uh, I just want to let you know I love your mom and your Robbins. Um, uh, but really, bro, you know, this is real coming from the heart. I love you to death. Take it all in. We still got a lot to work on. Got a lot to do. And again, have a wonderful night tonight. Congratulations, man. <laughs> <laughs> Tell my big brother I said I love him, man. You know, if Papa was still here, he would have told you, cut him deep and let him bleed. We are so proud of you, and we can't wait to see you smile in the NFL. Love, Mama. Love you, Mama. Just keep doing your thing, man, because I'm so proud of you, son. So proud of you. Love you, and uh, just can't wait to see what's next and forward for you. Not only is the entire family proud of you, the skies in heaven are glowing with joy. Just know, no matter what, I'll never stop fighting for you and Papa. Get loud, your name. That's tight. We're so pumped for you and so proud. Um, and we love you. Congrats. Congrats. Congrats Go Hazeeb. Yeah. I love you and welcome to the NFL family. I got the best family ever. <laughs> That's what it is.